welcome all participant uh, thank you for giving me opportunity to share my uh, some of my experience in the area of uh, biotechnological applications in uh, especially managing uh, forest genetic resources yeah. so uh, to give a brief introduction why we need to conserve uh, biological resources uh, biological resources are our capital of our country so uh, these diversities uh, will know the wealth when we utilize as well as conserved and these become our uh, biological resources and current uh, scenarios so we have utilized uh, extensively not conserved other way and uh, also there are uh, human interference so these resources becoming uh, extinting or we are losing some of these uh, species because of our inter uh, intervention or modernization and if you take an example of uh, medicinal plants uh, it is estimated that almost 95 percent of the medicinal plants are coming from uh, wild especially indian herbal industry too are are uh, completely depend on wild and slowly now started cultivating but still major share is coming from wild and if you consider medicinal plants uh, trade in india so there are 9500 are recorded as uh, herbal industries in india and they use more than 600 higher plant species as herbal units and about 960 medicinal plants which are in trade now so there is there are many species we lost and uh, see huge number of herbal industries i don't know how they depend and so presumed to be they are all coming from wild source only and this this is the uh, our institute has been uh, get, uh, classified uh, the species which are used in different uh, medicinal uh, 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 plants in different uh, Ayurveda systems, cloak and homeo and siddha. So it is traditional system of medicine. There are more than 6,000 species are being used in different systems of medicine. And our uh, institute has been uh, assessed the extensive uh, plant taxa, which is around 9,156 of our country. Among those, so there are 312 are uh, to be an, uh, threatened, highly threatened. Among those, I think four, 44 of them are very much endemic to Indian medicinal plant and few of them are uh, very much endemic to Western Ghats. And in current scenario, so the natural uh, populations of these uh, highly valued resources has been fragmented and isolated because of uh, earlier it was happening because of uh, uh, like natural process like fires, floods, and especially volcanic, there is a diversification of land area because of there is a diverse, there is a fragmentation. Now, so current scenarios, it is human made. Most of them are uh, we because of cultivation or because of uh, making road, uh, making infrastructure. So we have been natural populations have been fragmented, and there is no. Uh, genetic uh, flow from one region to another region because of longer distance of isolation. And so because of that, we need to conserve some of these resources. And why uh, do we conserve? So in that direction, so our group is working on prospecting some of the high value metabolite from some of these resources and also try to assess so where their genetic diversities are rich and as well as chemical entities are rich and uh, which is the best location we can conserve so these are the aspects we are working on so given one insight of uh, one example so anti-cancer drugs which are coming completely from uh, plants resources so 75 of the drugs which are directly coming from plant sources and another 25 percent of the drugs are directly coming from modification of the 75 percent so more or less so we are completely depend on plant sources so we need to understand their chemistry and then plant sources and we need to conserve that once the identification happens 
and there will be extensive harvesting of those kind of plants and then so there is a extension there is a threat and extinction and uh, so we'll go to where do we conserve how do we conserve next part so in this direction so our group is working on prospecting for for high, high yielding lines of population for some of these commercial medic medicinal plants producing uh, uh, like campothecine, roeticane, gal galantamine and also so we have losing those species which are earlier identified so we need to identify many other resources uh, like alternative sources so in this connection so we are applying phylogenetic search algorithm to identify newer species in Indian bioresource and also explore endophytic fungi which are associated with these plants also can produce similar metabolites so that we can produce from fungi and then independent of plants so that we can conserve those plants and independently we can produce an endophytic fungi and we have isolated some of the uh, biologically active compounds from uh, some of these resources and also so currently we are focusing on so if this metabolite is produced by highly endemic plant and how do we identify the metabolic pathway and then you can uh, express this one in a NFD fungi or heterologous system like E. coli or yeast so that we can produce whatever the required quantity and to understand so we are now started working on like metabolic profiling mapping and spatial distribution and localization of these metabolite understand where they are localized and understand the pathway and uh, which is the uh, a specific uh, tissue which is localized some of these metabolite and these atro using these heterogeneous uh, metabolite systems so that we can understand the metabolic pathways and also identify the sources where uh, uh, these sources are rich and so that we can take uh, some conservation studies and uh, apply the conservation genetic aspect and then restore those species in that uh, in situ uh, conservation. So I give uh, some insight on what are different molecular tools are available to study genetic diversity as well as the management of uh, genetic resources. And why uh, is uh, conserving genetic diversity is important? How can genetic diversity be used in conservation? So there are different molecular tools are available. Uh, so molecular markers, so marker which anything distinguish one individual to another, so that is a morphological marker or any molecular markers, any segment of DNA which uh, associate with part, associate with uh, any phenotype, so that is as called as marker and it can be associated in genome or gene. And there are different classes of uh, markers earlier used, morphological marker, markers that is phenotypic classification based on the uh, phenotype, uh, color, uh, structure, so so many other different morphological uh, uh, characters has been used, but those are all not uh, resolved the uh, issues and they started biochemical, there is a gene product like isosomes and all, again so there is a drawbacks of that and chromosomal and again chromosomals also there is a some certain level of uh, inheritance is not there and there is no uh, separation of some of these species and also analyzing the difference between the among the individuals among the population so now more often use these genetic uh, uh, dna sequence or dna fragments uh, both from nuclear and chloroplast can be used for understanding the species level identification as well as understanding the genetic diversity within and among the populations of uh, these highly threatened species and most often chlorophyll markers uh, in plants and uh, cytochrome oxidase is used to, to barcode the species which uh, which is currently highly used in forensic uh, system of uh, identification so what is dna barcoding so dna barcoding is any fragment of dna which actually distinguishes between the two individuals or species and uh, so in case of animals so people use uh, cytochrome oxidase so the mitochondrial dna and uh, so these are all very robust as well as uh, very quick and easily easy to identify uh, the uh, classification or particularly the species identification 
and in plant there are so many uh, reasons are there in 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 animals only cytochrome oxidase is there in case of uh, uh, plant so full cl uh, chlorophast marker so you, now we call as a plastome sequencing so we can sequence all these reasons different reasons of uh, chlorophast and identify the species level identification so uh, so more often used is rbcl uh, trp uh, and IT, ITC, IT, ITS region and MADK region. And uh, 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 so these regions specifically classify between two different uh, species. And so one of the study what we have done uh, from our lab is so Philanthus amorous is used in uh, treating uh, in many of the herbal products and uh, specifically treating for uh, hepatitis b so and we wanted to the in the trade there is we have suspected there are many species has been admixtured and sold in the name of uh, philanthus amorous and then so when we have using the some of these segment of dna and then identified from the market samples there are six different species of philanthus has been admixtured in the name of uh, amaran uh, philanthus amorous so that is the robustness of uh, uh, these uh, markers we can identify and also classify what uh, sample belongs to what species so uh, how it it will be done so uh, one is so we can collect whatever the suspected species which we want to identify extracted dna and also catalog there where you collected and what is the uh, some morphological descriptions and uh, so curate that one with respect to all the details and sequence with whatever I mentioned. So these are the reasons which uh, if it is uh, animals, you can go for uh, say, cytochrome oxidase and in terms of plants, you can go for specifically chlorophore sequences. And in, in, in case of fungus, we can go for ITS reason, intratranscribed reasons and then sequence and then there are already the databases is available. There is authentic samples have been already characterized and already put into the uh, uh, databases like uh, in DNA, uh, international barcode of life. So you can find most of the sequence authentic samples. And if not, so we need to create our own authentic sample sequence and then match with the whatever the sus suspected uh, samples. And there is a different uh, data analysis tools are available and then so if you identify that particular barcode so we can make it the sequence it as in barcode for that particular species or that particular region okay. so if you see so if we have a take one one of the issue maybe so hood samples which has been cut and there is a suspicious it is coming from natural habitat and then so we want to compare how whether this is the same plant which has been cut or something different so in that suspicion, so we can collect a DNA from the hood where it is cut and uh, where the log which has been where you uh, identified. So both the DNA can be isolated and then use uh, some of these markers, which are uh, chlorophyll markers amplify and then identify the phylogenetic analysts also sequence homology. If they both match, so they can say we can say so this is coming from especially that log. If not, so it is completely coming from different log. So we can identify the suspect, suspected food samples, which is coming from different places. And also there is adulteration is, adulteration is the biggest uh, task now. So even adult, adulteration of, uh, from oil to adulteration of, uh, uh, there is especially drug and all, and leaf or tea, and there are so many spices. So nowadays there are many adventures are coming up. So so what we can do is whichever the one, so they, if we want to identify, isolate DNA from that, and now sequence uh, uh, with the full plastome, now we can sequence full plastome, whatever the reasons I have mentioned, so all those we can sequence and identify, and uh, uh, identify using uh, reference uh, sequences so that which are the admixture is available in that. And one of the examples also forensic analysis, so, so African pangolian scales, so, so they have identified with uh, their suspected things, which are the one uh, are associated with what kind of species. 
so they have segregated into their so they may be sold in different name but when they have done it so they are associated with the very specific species which are found in african uh, forest so in that way so they identified what are the uh, forensics uh, especially meat which were uh, sold in different uh, markets and also further so these are all dna markers and also we can use uh, uh, metabolite as a marker which can be used for even species level and genus level uh, identification there are some of the chemo markers are very very much signature molecule for the species level also so in our study so we are working on diazolam species so there are two diazolam diazolam mulbaricum and diazolam binectriferum morphologically it's very very difficult to identify it is almost 99% similar unless you uh, closely work uh, with that particular species it's very difficult to layman to identify that one so what we have done we have identified one of the chemo marker and this is these are all the samples are coming from diazolam binectriferum and these are all the samples which are coming from diazolam mulbaricum you can see here so this is the barcode chemo marker for which is only present in diazolam binectriferum it is not present in other so this chromatographic techniques which is uh, uh, polarity based separation of these molecules it's very easy to do so it's just an uh, half an hour you can uh, identify which is the species uh, belongs to what uh, thing if you, if they are selling something for example if it is admixture by these two so that also we can both the band will appear this band and other one band if, if it appears so we can see say, there is a, a mixture of some of these molecules and also so uh, metabolic profiling also would help us in uh, identifying the species uh, species as well as identifying the same species coming from different places also because there is a signature molecules from one geography to another geography so there is difference so those different chemo markers can be used for identifying the species so there are different uh, platforms are available uh, uh, one of the robust uh, one is mass spectrometry analysis so there you can take whatever species and then extract with some solvents and uh, so there is a with derivatization without derivatization we can do so if you want to do a volatile compound so we can go for some derivatization do the gas chromatography mass spectrometry and if it is vol non volatile that is polar compounds you can go for liquid chromatography mass spectrometry and then identify there are so many bioinformatic tools so we can identify if you are large number of samples if you are analyzing but if you are one or two so we can manually we can manage with the identifying the chemo markers and liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry so this is a liquid chromatography and this one is a mass uh, mass spectrometry and here so for example so this is a your standard molecules so we can uh, actually separate out using the free space uh, column chromatography there will be inside column so we can flush the solvent with different polarity and then along with that so we can subject our sample inject our sample inside so that in the column there is a separation and this one is a standard we can run first as a standard and then so later on if you uh, subject your sample if they the retention time of the both of them are matching so then we can tell so this is the one which is uh, the chemo marker so we and also this particular molecule can be quantified and if for example if your chemo marker is this is the one and then you have a suspicious about your species so matching with retention time so we can identify so this is this plant also producing this one so the, this particular species is coming from this particular area and also so further so this particular isolated fragment uh, 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 chromatogram we call so this can be subjected for mass spectrometry and there is a here ionization source there will be the molecules will be ionized in this chamber with electric current and there will be a gas will be sprayed and there is a inside there is a uh, uh, there is a separation so we call as a quadrifolds so all these ions which are ionized will be identified by mass by charge ratio so how it works so this is the sample injection area so when you inject the sample there is a mobilized gas 
which spray in that chamber, which I have shown there earlier. And then there is a sample which we have subjected here in that capillary. So in that particular chamber, so there is a gas spray and uh, electric current and your sample you are injecting. And so all these ions, so whatever the colors it is, so they are actually ionized. Those ionized molecules will be inside. There is a quadrupole system. They will segregate all these molecules. And also there is a lens which is actually identify mass by charge ratio. And there is a collision energy if you want to fragment some of the uh, molecules so we can give an energy here and then fragment that particular mass so that we can identify exact structure of that molecule also So there is a detector inside after that once the molecules which is coming out from that quadrupole. So that particular detector, it will detect all the molecules by mass by charge ratio. And there is an electric amplifier. It amplify that one and then you will get a. So this is the chromatogram mass by charge ratio. And this is the uh, very powerful instrument. So you don't need a lot of quantity of material. So even it is nanogram quantity is enough. So as I mentioned earlier, so the same sample has been subjected for mass by charge ratio or LCMS analysis. You can see these all bands which is correspond to the molecule key marker. And the same molecules is absent in another plant which is diazolum mulbaricum. So all this can be done within a just one hour and this can be done in half an hour. So we can within a so even one and a half hour so we can identify so which is the species belong which is the sample belongs to what kind of species. And so later on so there are a lot of advancement of uh, mass spectrometry uh, techniques has been uh, done. So now so no need of extraction of the molecules we can just directly we can do there is a one technique recently has been identified by Cooks from Purdue University. It is a desorption ionization mass uh, electrospray ionization mass spectrometry. It is a developed advanced mass spectrometry developed from uh, earlier what I shown. So this this one is it happens in ambient condition. There is no nothing it happens in the chamber. It can be done in outside. So what is all the chamber whatever it is happening you can bring into uh, in the outside and mobilizing gas and then sample. So here there is no sample preparation. So you can just uh, keep the sample in that flat form and then uh, spray the mobilizing gas with a solvent and all the ionized molecules will enter into the one which is animation what I shown. So all the ionized molecules will be sucked by mass inlet and then all this will separated and again mass by charge ratio we can identify. And this is the, surf the surface sensitive method and ambient ionization no sample preparation. So if I want to identify how many of the participants would had and coffee or tea or whatever the drugs if they have to been taken. So if I want to identify, so that thumb impression is enough. If I keep here your thumb impression, I can identify. So you have been uh, taken uh, tea. So if you are taken tea, so there is a catechin is the molecule we can identify. And then uh, if you are taken coffee, caffeine will be there. So those based on that, I can identify quickly within half an hour. So it, it takes only just a milliseconds to identify that molecules. So this is how it works. It's advanced uh, things. This this platform is outside and the mobilizing gas with uh, uh, spray solvent. And this is your sample. You think if your uh, fingerprint is there, your finger is there here. What are the different molecules are there in your fingertip? 
so we can identify you can spray the solvent and then all the molecules in that regions will be ionized like h plus and so all these ionized molecules will be sucked by mass inlet and this mass inlet again say as i mentioned earlier so the similar way there will be a, a different quadrupole one two three triple quad uh, now the triple quadrupole is the uh, highly used uh, machine so this is the one which is the colored one again so the spray with the electric current and this is the one which is uh, ionized molecule which enters into the mass inlet and you can quant identify the mass by charge ratio so in a relatively so you can take if you have any leaf or anything so you can put it on that platform and identify all the molecules present in that and this is the power of uh, uh, instrumentation so this has been developed for identifying forgeries so uh, the the ink which has been used for 1947 and current the ink which is used is completely different if anything forgery happens just take that one no need of anything so you put it in that platform and identify what are the difference in that and also it has been highly valued in forensic level so uh, already there is a knapsack uh, mass spectrometry has been installed in some of the uh, airports so if your finger tip has some molecules immediately we can identify and also it's much more highly used this instrument is in a, in a brain tumor surgery and when it has been discovered and first is it has been installed in two uh, hospitals in uh, purdue and uh, it has been tried for brain tumor surgery and it is been successful and uh, now we, there are many number of uh, instrumentation has been installed in many hospitals cancer hospital especially and this is the platform has been developed uh, by the uh, the gram cooks and i got an opportunity to work with that group and uh, so similarly so the, most of the people who are tried were clinical side and i wanted to look into the plant uh, how the metabolite are distributed in the plant and you can see here this is the seed and uh, in during different developmental stages of uh, seed and through seedling formation you can see as uh, as the seed start growing we can see the uh, accumulation of different types of compounds and also different tissue localization you can see this particular one of the molecules is only in the uh, tip of the tissue and it is distributed all and this one is highly concentrated in mid rib and some of them are very concentrated in younger tissues then and if you cross section if you see so there is a pith there are so many molecules are in the pith and so like that there are it's a very interesting interesting thing and uh, now based on this particular map we are working on uh, elucidating the pathway we are in the almost 50% uh, of the pathway has been elucidated by uh, integrating with the multi omics platform like metabolomics proteomics and genomics and transcriptomics we have integrated and about to come up within another 2 3 months we will come up with a very great paper in this area so come back to again so uh, so far what i was discussing about phenotypic and uh, chlorophast uh, markers for species identification and uh, use of metabolic metabolome analysis uh, using different platform and come back to nuclear markers which can be used for diversity analysis and what is the ideal marker is it should uh, showcase the mendel inheritance and uh, showcase co dominant expression and most often so ssr uh, simply sequence repeats follow the co dominant markers and they should show highly polymorphic across the population and these sequences should be randomly distributed throughout the genome and frequency of occurrence in the genome should be high and highly reproducible they, so these are the ideal characteristics of the markers and these uh, these things will be used for identifying the population specific marker or how the gene flow is happening from one population to another population what is the genetic diversity so whether it is low or high so we can identify there are so many uh, common uh, commonly used molecular markers are there in diversity studies and uh, now recent so fast many people were started using ssr 
especially in forest genetic resource management ssr is the major one and also snp in the population especially women genetics they use snp uh, and so why they started uh, using more often these markers is because of uh, uh, easy to do number one now and as well as uh, their reproducibility is very high and polymorphism is very high so and also we can identify across different individual or different populations what is the difference in genetic level and also technological evolution they have classified into different classes like hybridized based dna markers like this restriction fragment length polymorphism oligonucleotide fingerprinting and nowadays so even we use that one but in a limited extent and now we are using more often is pcr based dna markers like rfpd and simple sequence repeats and the uh, amplified length polymorphism more often we use is uh, ssr and dna chip so we can develop a chips uh, uh, chip based uh, sequencing methods and we can screen as many as number of individuals are as many as many as uh, pop, uh, number of populations so this is the high throughput based on high throughput uh, sequencing they classify and uh, so what are these microsatellites as often i was saying so microsatellites one of the markers which can be used for genetic studies so this is the one so how uh, how they are different in uh, one population or one individual to another individual so these are um, highly going mutations and there is a change in that muta mutation level so we can identify what is the level of uh, uh, difference happens between individual across populations and uh, also these uh, particular uh, repeats are widespread in both eukaryote and I you, uh, prokaryotic uh, genomes and most often so they are used uh, in phylogenetic developing phylogenetic relationships and population genetic uh, studies and gene flow and parental assignment especially any parental uh, 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 issues are comes so one of the marker which is used both animal plant and uh, uh, human being uh, and the marker assisted selection so in the breeding programs they often use mark marker assisted uh, selection and also developing construction of genetic map and uh, genetic linkage studies so there are many ways we can use uh, these markers and uh, so earlier the limitation was uh, the uh, technology so when we if we want to develop a, any enrich a ssr marker which was laborious earlier and now so the technological development like uh, sequencing so we can go for uh, a dna sequencing which uh, which will be done very quickly and this is the one of the animations of how the dna sequencing has been done so you can just isolate a dna from uh, interest plant and then sequence it so what do you can after isolating a dna just fragment it uh, sequences and clone into large mix short fragments and uh, so those things and lot of copies number can be achieved by uh, cell multiplication and after isolating the uh, dna from uh, plasmid and put it into a sequencing uh, so in that so there will be free dna base pair with the fluorescence and as well as uh, uh, poly dna polymerase will be added and so there will be a terminator uh, codons also will be added and then dna primers and so what will happen is so there is a amplification with a complementary based uh, 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 basis and it happens with uh, especially uh, heating and colding method so when you heating so fragment will cleave off and our primer will come and bind to the complementary base and then there will be a, a, a polymerase uh, enzyme which will actually extend that one using the nucleotide which has been there in that
So once the terminator base is added there, so this will be actually known. And like that, there will be so many fragments could be uh, uh, sequenced, means it will be based on the complementary based. And what will happen is, so like that, it will stop making here the cleave off, and then again, there will be another primer, so like that extension, so there will be, depending upon the, the extendability of the uh, primer, as well as uh, DNA polymerase. So we can sequence the, uh, depending upon that, we can sequence the different length of uh, segment of DNA. So on all these, uh, this is the same repetition. So if, if you identify, if you sequence like that, and once after that, there will be a capillary tube, all these uh, sequence will be, goes to in this capillary, and based on this, fluorescence so each one as each one capillary and these fragments will be entered into the there is a laser which detect the all these fluorescence and this color will be detected by the there is a beam of the one cameras which is so each color codes for example a c G. So like that, so it will be as soon as so, uh, the B, uh, the fragment passes each one, so there will be a beam, it will detect the color and then it will give the conan. And so earlier was so length was very less, now we can achieve 150 base pair range. And so there are so many platforms are available, so like Illumina platforms, so, so which has been uh, used for uh, low length to high length sequencing and nanopore it is a, uh, base pairs is up to 3 KB, means 300 base pair we can sequence in Vastas. And again, PacBio, so each one has its own advantage and uh, most often used Illumina. If you want to go for high length sequencing, so we go for Nanopore and PacBio sequencing. So uh, depending upon interest, so we can go for whole genome sequencing. So there is a gap filling, so we can integrate all these platforms to understand the sequence, uh, uh, developing the whole genome sequencing. And once if you get, a, once the sequence comes, all these things will be ATG, raw data. And again, raw data, so will be those fragmented, fragment uh, raw data will be, this is the earlier wet biology process. It was taking very much uh, tedious. And now, so what we can do is, so we can, once the sequence comes, so all those reads, so we can cleave off all the adapter, which has been added, uh, attached to that particular sequencing. And then, so there is a cluster making and then SSR, there are tools are developed. So we can develop, uh, identify the SSR and annotate and then we can develop the primers. And also if you have a available, more number of sequence has been already done and it is there in the database. So we can for in silico polymorphic test and then we can identify even before going to the laboratory uh, experiment. So we can in silico itself, we can identify which one probably polymorphic and we can use it for genetic studies and currently we are doing uh, in association with IWST we are working on your corpus antelinas and one part of the sequence we have done and now so we have developed identified some of the uh, SSRs and we are doing for using those we want to test how the the genetic diversity uh, within a population and across the different regions uh, what is the genetic level is there any uh, private alleles, which is uh, very specific to geographical location of that uh, population. Okay. And so, uh, how can genetic analysis can be uh, used? Um, so, as I mentioned, so these are the uh, markers are available. And using that, what kind of studies can be done? And asking the different research questions uh, with respect to conservation studies. And I will give some examples. So why we need to uh, do this one, uh, conservation genetic uh, uh, studies uh, in current uh, land use change and consequences. So species are becoming uh, rare and endangered and the trend because of so many interventions of uh, man-made man interventions and populations are becoming fragmented and uh, loss of genetic diversity within especially individual or uh, population loss of alleles and due to those so there is uh, extinction of these species uh, both in locally and global extinction 
So if you take one example as Chita's story, so why uh, genetic diversity is most important. So now Chita is a highly threatened species because of very low level of heterozygosity. It's almost high uh, in infant mortality because of uh, homozygous and uh, poor spermatozoa co uh, count and uh, also captivity of uh, populations of uh, uh, is very susceptible for many diseases and all because so there is a lot of inbreeding and uh, homozygosity has been achieved uh, and lost heterozygosity there is no uh, resistance or uh, private alleles uh, within or among the populations so that way so this has been a threat actually so to high, highly threatened species and we need to conserve so it is with reversing back is becoming a biggest problem and if you uh, consider one of the how inbreeding which will uh, see uh, extinction of the species one of the butterfly if you see probability of extinction and uh, heterozygosity level when the heterozygosity level is very low so the extinction prop proportion will be very high and the heterozygosity is very high so the probability of extinction will be very low so if you uh, like so if in the plant if you see genetic diversity versus the seeds per uh, flower in uh, one of the species in root ACA, if you see here the low genetic diversity there is a very very low seed set and higher the genetic diversity very high genetics uh, uh, seed set and again so mean seed mass per population so if it is population level again so we have associated uh, very low uh, genetic diversity is very low mean seeds and then higher the genetic diversity so there is a high level of seed set and all and again so another one more uh, plant so mean molecular variance you can see his mean number of seeds per plant is very high uh, when the molecular variance is very high. Okay, so there are numerous uh, examples indicate genetic diversity is important for the species to survive as a, a survival of populations and for their re reproductive success and also to allow species to adapt in into change in different environmental conditions. And if they don't have that kind of heterozygosity level or diversity level, it's very difficult to adapt to the change in uh, environmental conditions. And uh, so few of the examples from our lab. So as I mentioned earlier, so the importance of Tizulum panectiferum, this is very much endemic to uh, Western Ghats and present only around 300 uh, plants across the different um, areas. And most important, uh, it has been known for both timber as well as uh, uh, its chemicals called uh, roltecane. It is chromin alkaloid, and it's a very unique alkaloid in the whole earth. So it has coming from hybridized molecule, flavonoid pathway and alkaloid pathway. And it is very uh, uh, rare and unique molecules found in this plant. And it has, a, this is a flower and ring, and this is a especially and uh, ni nitrogen containing alkaloid ring because of this as uh, which has been used anti-inflammatory and immunomoderatory studies and which is the one uh, potent cdk inhibitor so and cdk inhibitors are very much interested in the treatment of cancer and now so there are some analogs of uh, roltecane like flower fluidal has been recently approved for anti-cancer as well as anti-hiv agent Considering this importance, so we have identified the uh, individual which produces uh, 0.9 to 7%. And if you see here, these are the populations which we collected different uh, regions of the uh, Western Ghats. And you joke is the uh, population which produces very high amount of uh, uh, this compound. And also few individuals we identified which produces more than five, uh, six, seven percent of the molecules, and we have actually now going for mass multiplication of those uh, individual molecules. Uh, and also, so seedling level we have, as I mentioned, so we using mass spectrometry imaging, we have identified some of the localization of these uh, metabolites, and also they are not uniformity in distribution; they are distributed heterogeneously, and also. Uh, it's very there are larger implication of these identifications so which tissue can be used if it is used in ayurvedic studies and all and uh, so same uh, populations which are uh, identified and we have 
done an ecological niche modeling some of the populations are coming from especially highly suitable and some of them are excellent places and all other maybe because of uh, intervention of uh, many changes uh, in the modernization so maybe some of the populations has been uh, lost here so we used some of the uh, microsatellite marker using uh, liker sequencing and this is the band separations based on so you can see there is a very specifically different band which is uh, separated different individuals as well as populations and uh, when we have done an heterozygosity uh, level as well as number of alleles per populations when you consider so there is no much difference so uh, especially so uh, number of alleles is very less compared to other miliaceous species and so average allele was something 5 to 6 7 and uh, uh, so this is actually so we we would have got much more than uh, that and this could be because we have uh, uh, many uh, uh, age old trees are there so that's why there is uh, some level of uh, uh, alleles has been maintained and if you see the geographic distance and genetic distance there is there is not much correlation but there is uh, some pattern in that association and heterozygous city level so if you see the here there is no much difference and usually miliaceous species uh, which has maintained above 7 to 8 uh, 80 percent of the uh, uh, heterozygous city but compared to other species this is very less but more interesting is so when we compared with adult and the seedling so adults uh, means ancestral tree which still maintains some level of uh, 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 diversity or allelic diversity and as the seedlings goes seedlings it is especially going down means that is actually an this shows there is a threat and as well as a losing means there is a lot of inbreeding is happening within the population and there is a low in genetic uh, flow and there is a continued study we are doing so earlier we have only four molecular markers now we have developed many markers so we are working on that and from this study so there is a limited identified there is a limited pole on exchange between the populations and uh, low heterozygosity which when compared to other miliaceae and uh, the study uh, identified the decline in the number of alleles from adults to seedling and few population suffered heterozygosity deficiency in seedlings and selective loss of alleles in seedling and this could uh, lead to uh, further loss in diversity and another uh, question we asked is so already the forest department has been already taken care of protected areas means protecting some of the areas and we asked whether so do reserve forest or wildlife sanctuaries offer for protection or protected areas are really conserve the genetic diversity so what we have done so these are some of the conserve uh, protected areas in karnataka and then so one of the major again so anti cancer uh, metabolite producing plant called notopredis pneumoniana which produces campotensin which is one of the uh, uh, inhibitor of topoisomerase in and now so there are campotus in itself as well as its natural uh, analog as well as synthetic analogs has been approved for uh, two three different types of cancer treatment and uh, now it is available if uh, taxal is not available so they will next they will go for campotus in and campotus in related areas. and because of that there is a lot of demand for this particular plant and a major source of uh, this plant uh, campotica cumulata it is a temperate uh, plant and again that is under threat now so and in indian context so uh, mapia which is producing very high uh, campotensin compared to other species as well as other uh, individuals okay and uh, so we have noticed during our work so there is a 20 percent decline in the population and uh, there is a heavy collection of seeds from natural habitats and we wanted to look at impact of harvesting and genetic diversity so harvesting will happen in not in a protected area it is happen in open area or buffer areas and these are the areas we have identified uh, uh, across the gradient so there is a protected area and there is unprotected area um, and we collected the samples from that particular different regions if you see here copy 
proportion of adult as a caucasian so which is uh, non protected area is very high and proportion of cut stems like this so we can find in only in uh, non protected area compared to protected areas and then if you see allelic richness which is very high in uh, protected areas and non protected areas there is a low in genetic diversity that shows so protected areas suffers for conservation actually is and also we have identified private alleles very high private allele uh, we have identified in protected area and very low in non protected areas and again so rare alleles and common alleles we can find very high in protected area and unprotected area is very less and similarly so we are asked the same questions in rattan and bamboo and uh, as well as sandals and if you see uh, in case of uh, uh, rattans we these are the some sampling areas uh, uh, protected areas uh, so you can see here so we have done in core to buffer you can see here the core is highly protected and buffer there is some interference of human and then periphery it is highly especially disturbed so if you see as yes, the core is very high genetic diversity buffer is little more less in periphery so our hypothesis is right so the highly protected areas means the like a different core zone is has a high diversity compared to periphery again in another one more sandalwood which is so uh, we know also uh, so harvested for its artwood oil and it has been used in many a uh, purpose from soap making to even ayurveda uh, to uh, making so many sunscreen uh, lotions so many so there are so many adjuvants so because of the high demand and also it has been earlier it is coming from wild uh, illegal uh, trading and all it has been happened and again you can see here so there is a uh, different level of uh, um, diversity in different uh, core and buffer and all uh, periphery is very low and compared to core uh, and uh, so normalized gene diversity is very high in the protected area compared to uh, non protected area and also uh, identified high genetic diversity in uh, deccan regions of uh, south india and these are some of the uh, identified so if you once if you identify the individual the populations which are very high in genetic diversity so that is should be given as a high priority to in situ conservation and as well as ex situ conservation uh, and also the high conserve high diverse plants can be replanted into where the uh, homozygous city homozygous populations and so that uh, by that way so we can restore the genetic diversity in the natural uh, both managing with in situ and uh, ex situ conservation in that direction so our uh, uh, institute is working with forest department and identified uh, almost more than 108 medicinal plant conservation areas across 12 states and so uh, now currently they have been maintained in situ conservation and so one examples we give so how integration of uh, both uh, field level and the genetic level work which can restore the species so one of the species is called um, semicarpus catlecanasis so i think i hope uh, professor uh, wasudev sir has been given some of the insight of this uh, so what we have done here so uh, we have identified the population which is only i found in uh, one place uh, it is called catlecan uh, in central western ghat and uh, so only few individual we identified and we identified within among them so there are a lot of uh, homozygous and heterozygosity and diversity level and identified high diverse individuals and again so we have mass multiplied that uh, both uh, by using seed and as well as tissue culture methods and so we have developed what is only that particular only one population we have identified across uh, eastern ghats and how to restore and where to restore that one and then we have done an ecological niche modeling and where the population is there and identify similar climatic situation where else we can find and again rip plant that particular uh, species in uh, regions where the highly suitable as established in the natural populations so there we can uh, plant it there 
the success rate will be very high and then so we have identified so professor is monitoring that one so he has identified so they are very well come up in the same in the ex situ conservation uh, as well as in the in situ conservation so i have done some so uh, to conclude so take home messages is there are several advanced tools are available for management of uh, forest resources and specifically chlorophast and cytochrome oxidase marker uh, can be used for identification of species as well as uh, uh, forensic uh, disputes and uh, chemo markers also can be used for rapid identification of plant species and within a species uh, difference and ssr is the best marker in detecting uh, genetic diversity because of their inheritance as well as polymorphism and few examples of uh, 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 have given so hotspots of genetic diversity can be identified using these markers and uh, also can be uh, used these uh, inference or uh, can uh, outcome of these studies can be utilized for in situ conservation So I acknowledge all the my funding agencies, uh, DST, uh, DBT, uh, and NBA, and as well as Commonwealth uh, Fellowship, which uh, I got uh, in 2012, uh, and member from School of Ecology and Conservation, and Dayas Lab from Concordia University, and Professor Uma Shankar and Dayanandan, and Ravikant from Atri, and Ramesh, and Vasudev sir from Sirsi and Prabhudan Divakar from uh, IWST, and also uh, our group, which are working in different aspects, both uh, molecular, chemical, and uh, chemical ecology. Thank you.